Yeah. I'm up. It worked. Yeah. Yay! I thought it would never work. All right, so I got the whole thing in here. We've been working on this. We've been working on it for half an hour trying to get this working. All right, if you could close the doors too, that would be awesome, guys. All right, thank you to Trevor, my technical guru, who uh, manages to always pull my, my butt out of the fire when this uh, sort of thing happens. So I apologize. My. Uh, Everything decided it didn't want to cooperate. Now I gotta get the chat up. So, um, you all can't, it doesn't look like any of y'all here right now. So, if you're watching this video, <laughs> um, I apologize. Uh, there we go. Here, Joy's here. Um, cool. Joy, could you tell me if you have sound? Uh, and you'd think I remember from one time to the next how I get on my... Get on the one that actually... Trying to get it so I have a chat. Okay, do we do have some people here? Yay, yay. So I apologize. Um, I'm not sure why that. Um, there, and there it is. Okay. I always stumble on it, so I never know how to actually go in and truly find it. So, okay. Whew. So, yeah, um, Trevor, my technical guru, my son, um, was able to uh, get it working. So, we ha. So, we will be back and working on, I assume you guys can hear me. Nobody is saying anything. So, um, it sound okay. Nobody is saying that it's okay, so you must not be able to hear me. Okay, I'm okay, going to try right now. now. Can, Can you, you hear me? Because, because I keep asking. asking. Oh, oh, so now, so now I, I click, click and, and you probably, you probably can't, can't hear me. Okay, now I'm going to ask again. Is sound okay? Okay, well I turned off, clicked off the thing that was causing the echo. So, alright, so we should be good. <sighs> Now that I'm completely discombobulated, I don't know why nobody else ever seems to have these issues, but as we all know, those of you who've been around for a while, I've had difficulties when it comes to anything to do with the computer forever. If those of you who've been around for a while recall when Ansley, my niece, used to do my website for me, and she's like, oh, Aunt Laura, not a problem. When I told her in the beginning, you know, I have things happen that happened to nobody else. And she's like, no, it's, we'll, we'll, I'll take care of you. Um, a few months in, she was like, you're right. I've never seen anybody. The guy, she was helping her with some things because there was some, as always, complexities. Even he said, he's been doing this for many, 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 many years. And even he said, I have never seen the kind of issues she has with anybody else. <laughs> I'm just so lucky, I guess. So, <laughs> anyway. All right, so what we are going to be working on today is we are going to be continuing on with the modification, which is like the front half of the summer fairy house, and we're going to be putting it onto a base. Now, we're going to work on the base um, and such on... Thursday, um, but I want to keep working on this part um, today. I have to grab an egg carton too because we're going to do some stuff to the, the chimney. Um, but um, we're going to keep um, working on this 
and keep on I can always write it down write what down sounds like a little shade <laughs> um, I'm not sure what I should be writing down because when I'm trying to get up on my iPad so I have the chat because of how I now have my it used to be that my computers were side by side when I would broadcast but now my um, computer my main computer my Apple is over on the desk that's a few feet away and it's too hard to watch the chat so I've been bringing the chat up on my iPad but I don't really pay attention closely enough to what I'm clicking also and I just see oh there click that it's live so um, um, Writing, writing that down would not help because I don't know exactly what it is I'm clicking on. I'm just trying to find it because it's usually while I'm live. And so I'm trying to get it quickly. So anyway, but it's up. So um, as I've said for many, 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 many years, you know, I've been doing this. It's it's pushing on 11 years now um, of these, these broadcasts. You know, this is like what the we did Ustream for many, many years. And, um, and then switched to YouTube Live a couple years ago when it um, first came out. Um, but uh, I'm I'm not the most technically oriented. I, I do enough to get get by to be able to do this kind of stuff. But um, it's not my super strength. But we pull it off regardless. And what you see is what you get. You know, I'm not in big on wanting to do this fancy production. You know, I don't put header, you know, lead-ins on all my videos. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. I'm just, you know, I'm more of a crafter than I am a technical uh, guru. So, you know, if, if it's not okay with you, sorry, it's what I do. It's it's the best I do. So, um, it, you know, the stuff the stuff isn't easy to do. So, um, anyway. Um, Alrighty, so um, I'm going to go ahead and I will switch cameras and we're going to go ahead and get started. Now that I have my little ramp. <laughs> Alright, so then it, this is just this microphone, so I click that on. So um, let me know if that works okay. If you can hear me, that would be awesome. Alrighty, what I've been um, sitting here kind of working on before, and all of a sudden I looked up and realized the time, and then we had the tank is a little difficulty, so that's why we got such a late start. Um, I'm working on some pieces um, that I'm going to be using on the roof. So these are three I still need to glue together, and we'll get to that here in a second. Um, what I have decided to do is I am using a paper that I already have available um, to, to do this project with. I am using the Pink Pearl Pixies. Um, paper pack. It's also the one that is used for the um, ferry um, sail, sailing ship. Um, so some of you may already have this one. I will be designing a paper, another ferry paper, um, just with everything going on. It's um, I There's just no way. I got it between last Thursday and now. So <coughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to use one that I already have. Um, it also... Um, there's some wood um, sheets available with it, which is what I'm using right now for that roof stuff. So, um, but it, it's a little bit, you know, soft, feminine pink colors. I was going to do one that was a little bit more masculine, and I will be doing that paper, and will end up using that on a different fairy house. Um, but if you want to do it out of this same paper, this is the Pink Pearl Pixies paper. Say that fast three times. Um, and it is available on my website. Um, it's ready to go. It's been been up for a while, and and all of my um, papers and my tutorials are all currently on sale. And I will be keeping them on sale through at least mid April, um, with everybody home and so many of you home and crafting. I decided to go ahead and just keep the sale going um, for a few weeks. Um, to help everybody out so um this kind of just gives you an idea of what all these papers look like there will be an album that goes with this one and um 
I will at this. Well, these are the windows for the ship room. We're not going to be using those. Um, but um, okay, my brain is just jumping. Um, um, I know Lois Blue is your favorite, and I will be doing a blue one. But at least there's blue tones in the paper I'm using on the roof. Does that help? Um, so, um, but I, uh, okay, where do, where, I just love it when my brain just completely stops and, and I don't recall exactly what I was, was talking about. So, um, um, but, oh yeah, anyway, um, but yeah, no, so the, the, my, all my tutorials are 35% off. That's the video tutorials and written tutorials and all of my, um, a digital paper, so you download and print, um, those um, are all 20% off. Um, the um, <coughs> Somebody's asking what kind of printer I use. I use an ET um, 2750, which is um, um, an echo tank or the refillable tanks. Rather than using the ink cartridges, it has four tanks, black, cyan, magenta, yellow. Um, and those tanks get refilled. I print a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I did not have to buy new um, bottles of ink for over a year. Um, it's amazing. Um, I highly recommend it. I'm very impressed with the Epson. This is an Epson ET2750. It prints um, 8.5 by 11, 8.5 by 14. Um, those sizes. It doesn't do 12 by 12. Um, I have a printer that does 12 by 12, um, but it's not the Echo Tank, and it's outrageously expensive to redo the cartridges, and it eats cartridges like they're, they're, um, you know, a dime. So um, I don't do 12 by 12 papers. For those of you who are new to me, I do, I do my papers all print on eight and a half by 11 cardstock. You can choose what weight works best for you in terms of the cardstock, but everything prints on 8.5 by 11 because the vast majority of you don't have a printer that will print on 12 by 12. I've gotten so used to working with 8.5 by 11 that when I actually use 12 by 12, I find I have significantly more waste when I'm doing either 3D projects or albums. I have a lot more waste with 12 by 12 than I have with um, the eight and a half by 11 or it's eight by 10 is the usable area on them. So I don't feel that this is sliding anybody by having them being an eight by 10 printable area because just in my experience and I've been doing um, about four years now, I've been doing the digital papers um, so I think I can f talk with some, some pretty good experience levels, but I am finding that I don't miss the 12 by 12s. And when I use 12 by 12s, I have more waste. So, um, but you obviously can do this out of your stash with 12 by 12 papers. So, um, <coughs> but, um, I love I love, I love my printer. Okay. So what I'm working on here is I'm creating some little wood pieces, quote unquote wood. It's pat wood, printed wood. Um, but what I'm using for this is, um, and these I'm going to use for doing my roof. You can do the roof like it is in the pattern. I'm just trying to do some things that are a little bit different. This is using a Tim Holtz alteration Sizzix um, die which is these little wood planks. So it, it's kind of deceiving because I didn't realize it till after I'd already bought this and opened it up and realized because they show it here with the texture on it, I thought this was one of those um, uh, Sizzix and Tim Holtz have several um, die sets that have the texture plate and the... Um, the die, the steel rule die. So I assumed it had the texture plate, but it does not. The texture plate is a separate purchase. So um, you need both of these to give it the texture. Now, 
I, I did run this through with a texture plate so you can see that on the back of these. Um, it's not as noticeable on the front because I haven't inked these yet. These are just cut straight from um, the paper. And I, because of the placement of them, there's always a lot of waste <laughs> with the steel roll dies of just is how they manufacture. Um, so I have a lot of pieces that maybe got cut off or something, but I, because they're for the roof, I just used them anyway. Cause then, then I just, it's cut off straight. Cause like these super long ones, I'm going to cut these in half anyway. So, um, so I have some little pieces and stuff. Um, because of using the leftover chipboard because I'm this like seriously mega my, uh, miser when it comes to this stuff. But even, you know, some of these pieces, I'm going to be cutting these because they're going to be kind of be like um, shingles on to the roof. So I'm going to be cutting some of these down anyway. So some of them that have the straight edge, it works out because they're going to be tucked underneath, you know, another one because we're going to be using these like, as I said, like shingles. So hopefully I have enough of them here. Um, to do our roof. I'm then going to use an egg carton um, to create some stones that we're going to use um, for on the chimney. We're also going to be doing just like it shows in the, the pattern for the summer fairy house. Because what I did with this one, if you didn't watch the first section, you can go back and watch it. It's, uh, it's on YouTube, so you'll be able to watch it if you want. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Is we basically just cut the summer fairy house in half and put a back on it. I have an opening here so that we can put um, tea lights inside. And then this is going to sit on a base, which will be a box that will hold the, um, the, um, the album that I will be doing to go along with this one. So, um, and we're just going to be kind of working along on this for the next week or two, I just wanted to, you know, have a somewhat regular um, project and I've been working on other projects <laughs> that I had to get done. Um, so I didn't want to reinvent an, uh, a new project. So I'm using an older project that I did this one we did back in 2011, 2012, something like that. Um, so it was before a good chunk of you, um, we're watching my live my live shows um so if you want you can always go back and watch the videos for the original summer fairy house was which is in the archives of my uh, on my website at lauradenisondesigns.com all of my videos pretty much all of my videos there with the exception of the video tutorials um are free to view and have been free to view and will remain free to view um on my website um there were most of those were from when I used to stream on, on, um, Ustream, um, for many years. And so those are, um, come on, stop. That's weird. Um, why is that not sticky? I have to put some glue on there. Um, but you can go back and watch and it should be under, I think, um, Something like Magic Garden or Garden something. Um, um, Magic Garden series, I think is what it was called. So it's under that, and it, this is the Summer Fairy House. And, and we're constructing it the same way other than the back half, which used to have a roof that lifted up in an album would fit in there, but it was a small album. I mean, everybody wants these Jimongo albums these days and not the little ones. So, so anyway, but yeah, no, and people are talking about the, the digital stuff. You can, um, you can absolutely use, you know, whatever you have in your stash. I mean, we can all justify our stashes now that we can't get out <laughs> and go shopping. So, well, Mr. Mr. Salem's being just his little devil self. If I could catch him, Joy wants to see him. He's not much bigger than he was before. He's he's a pretty tiny little cat. Salem's our our, our newest um, cat addition that we added this last fall. So he's but he's a little he's a little devil boy. So um, right now. Yeah, Magic Garden Fairy Series. So under M. So anyway, all right. So I let me just glue these these three because what I did is I ran these, I cut them, 
I layered them and cut them, but I didn't have them glued. So I just layered and cut the paper, the chipboard and the paper. And this is just lightweight chipboard. Uh, along with the paper, I got them, I cut them all at the same time. And then I will do some inking on them to give them some further distress. And then, um, and it's always the favorite of many is we'll use ground up uh, moss to cover any unexpected situations, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, he doesn't talk much, so you won't hear him. He and Tigger are playing right at the moment. So if they knock something over, you'll hear that. Other than that, they're just kind of jumping up and down off the couch. I have a couch here in my studio. And uh, so they're just wrestling on the floor right now. Now, Tigger's about twice the size of Salem, so it's rather humorous. Because all he has to sit up and put a paw, and he can hold him down. So it's pretty funny to watch the two of them. And I, glued, I just didn't want to lose these parts. So I it glued. Now we did do the assembly for the most part for the house on the last class. So we'll just keep on working and getting this one. And we're just going to be continuing. Continuing on with this. Now, um, before I do the roof part, um, as it shows in the pattern, we're going to do some essentially kind of like paper mache type stuff where we're going to be covering over um, the edges here of the, the window and stuff. Um, just to kind of, so we don't have these, these kind of brush edges. So it'll give that much more of, of that kind of, um, more like it's stuccoed or something like that. And then we're going to use egg cartons to make, um, stone like on here. Um, and then we can decide whether we want to do, um, down here, similar to the kind of stucco leg on the, um, the tower or not here. Let me, let me grab the original and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, here's the original house from way back, way back. Um, it's got some little clay mushrooms, which uh, have not baked yet. But so this has paper um, as the shingles on, or the roof shingles, which you can do. And I'll show you how I did this in. Um, in the written pattern, but we're just going to do something a little bit different with this one with these these die cut ones Now I will be doing the leaf like um, roof on the tower and also on the when we put this on the um, The entryway awning so we'll still be doing that um, Punched or die cut leaves on that, but as you can see here, this is just painted and it's, it's made to look somewhat like it's stucco which I also did here on the chimney for this one, but we I want to make it look more like stone on the one we're doing today. The flowers are coming off. Um, but as you can see, for those of you who weren't here, basically we've just cut it. And you can watch the, the, the last video that tells you exactly um, how to do that. And I've managed to knock these windows out, so I have to, <laughs> I have to do some repair work because this just takes a beating. Um, as I have said for a million years, like this is, I think from 2011, as I said for a million years, um, glues and adhesives can come unstuck. So what may stick now, you know, 10 years down the road, it's starting to lose some of that stick. So um, like the actual stickiness of these, these things, if they've lost their sticky, so I have to glue them back on and such so I, I need to do a little repair work on here so but anyway this is this is the that summer fairy house and we are doing a modification of that it's going to have a much larger base there's going to be a stream and we'll be working on that base then on um on tuesday so
So, two seconds. I know I have some here in my studio. I have some uh, uh, egg cartons. Let me grab one. All right, sorry, I had to find them. I had them stashed away when I reorganized my studio a while back. All right, so um, these are those kind of pressed paper type of um, to fit the eggs. And you can even use parts from from this end, but it's easier to use some of these flatter parts. So I can take like here where it's molded this edge. Those are harder to use, but you can also dampen this stuff down and flatten it. But you want to, you know, get, take some pieces. I'm probably going to take these a little bit bigger because then I can trim them down as I need to as I'm working, but this ridge is kind of hard to use, so I'm going to tear it off, and it just tears off with your thumb. Are you have clear plastic ones? But you can also just use chipboard and tear it if you don't have, um, you know, egg cartons like this. There's something on recycling here in Washington that we have these kinds. So, I know some people have the foam kind, but again, you can just use chipboard and, and tear it as well. Well, yeah, but in, back in 2011, I wasn't using that much of a strong adhesive. So yes, a strong adhesive will last that long, but back in those days, I don't know that I was as much. And many times when I'm doing it on the live show too, it's always my intention to go back and add additional adhesive, but I don't always get the opportunity to go ahead and do that. So... So just parts that don't look like you can get them to flatten out, I just take those off. But you can also just take some of these crumbs up and you can actually just soak this in water and get it to kind of flatten out. It's almost like hand pressed paper type stuff. Yeah, those cardboard drink holders that's a really good idea elfin squad um so some places that have um, the drink holders i know like starbucks here has th that are made out of this kind of thing and you could use um those as well so um now on i am going to take and set this 
in place on here. Now, it is oh about an eighth of an inch here in front of the um, um, back edge. Um, one thing also to be aware of as I'm looking at the video, like what you guys are watching, um, please be aware of um, YouTube has recently just set everybody's videos now, and I'm sure it applies to streaming as well, is the, um, they're not going to be doing as much in high definition for the next 30 days because of the volume of people around the world being home and being on their computers, on YouTube, you know, on any social media and stuff. Um, because of that, they have reduced the, the um, definition of videos and stuff. So if the video is not as clear as what you're used to, it has nothing to do with what I'm doing. It's YouTube has scaled back in order to keep things functioning for everybody. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that YouTube um, had done that. So, so anyway, I'm going to set this on here in the spot where once it's attached, it will be because I want to mark where this roof, I want it so I notch that and then the roof line, see under here, I'm, I just wanted to mark that because where it attaches to the house. So this section right here, I want to make sure that I don't put any, um, so this is the area right here where I don't want to put any of the, the stones or in this little notch here where um, the roof um, touches up to the chimney. So um, by marking that, then I can glue these guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to glue these on, so let that dry while we work on, then we'll work on the tower. So we're just going to do this until I've got this started. So we're just going to tear these so they kind of look like stones. And you can make them larger or smaller, depends on, you know, what what you want it to look like. If you want it the larger stones or, or smaller stones, the sm smaller, you know, just takes a little bit longer to get it all set up. Because then, after we get these all attached on, then we can um, kind of generally paint it and make it look all stone-like. That's profound to make a statement, huh? So Netflix has only done it in Europe so far, but YouTube is making it universal for wherever. Um, so Netflix is just streaming in a reduced um, rate in um, Europe only, and but YouTube is doing it everywhere. I mean, I've noticed significant differences in, um, we've had some issues with, you know, my husband's working from home. Trevor's here all the time. Sarah's doing stuff, school stuff and such. So I'm trying to work. So we're all drawing on the internet. Um, you know, just in our house alone. So you take that and do that with everybody. And it, you know, it puts a lot of stress and strain on the systems. So we're just tar tearing these into stone size pieces. Oh, I don't know if you heard that or not, Joy. That was that was Little Salem. They're having quite the wrestling match. All right, I can start gluing these on then. So I don't want any to be, you know, on this edge, but I can hang it over so that it. it I don't want it to be to where it hangs over further than you know this face. So. So even if I do have it hanging over the way like this one is, I'll be able to go through and trim that. And 
gonna try to keep a little bit some little gaps in there and stuff too the beauty is I can also fold this around the corner so that it looks looks like a stone that wraps around I'm going to just trim this off actually. I just don't want it. Oh, come on. Fold around the corner and stay glued. Just hold it for a second. Probably better to go ahead and glue them on individually. So then you can just tear them to fit. For those who we call the um, Spring Fairy House, the dollhouse looking one, we used foam and we carved our chimneys so this is fun to you know have different ways to do in that just then kind of turn into stone masons and just glue these on. Yeah, you could totally do a, a chimney the same as we did it on the um, that Spring Fairy house. That was a fun that was a fun one. The, what I loved about that one is there were so many people who didn't think that that was something they could do. And yet they did. And you can just uh, tear it to fit. Well, that one just kind of came apart. <laughs> All right, well, I'm not going to use that piece because that one just wants to fall apart. Okay, so let's tear it off from another little edge here so this one works. And I'm not worried about hanging over because I can trim that like you saw me do already. So now there's this I'm going to work my way around kind of that little slot where the roof line is going to go. So I'm just going to work around that.
So you can see now it's starting to look like, like stone on there. This parts that are hanging over, I'm just going to trim off. Kind of butt up to the edge, the ones that are coming from the side. So you can see along the corner edge, just bringing them together so that they kind of look like they're stones. The other alternate, if you don't want to do it this way, you can do it just like we did in the uh, the original one, where it's just um, I used just the medium to make it look like it was stucco. I just wanted to do something a little different. We're not making that exact duplication of what the um, first one was. This is just showing you some different ideas of what you could do. Much easier than working with stones and a chisel where you'd have to chip to get these to fit properly. And the one I folded so that I can wrap the corner to the back. Just gotta hold that one on for a second until it catches. cats that went out now. I need to go let those out. Those of you been around for a while, if it's not a kid, it's a pet in my house interrupting things. So I'm going to go let, let them out. You want to have to? You want it out? Well, see, don't he says, I do not want to go on camera. Nope, nope, nope. So I don't care how much Aunt Joy wants to see me. <laughs> I'm not going on. You can't make me. All right, so again, just working my way around that little spot where the uh, roof comes down. He's like, no, I want out. <sighs> Children and pets. It will be the death of me yet. Yeah, we went into shelter in place yesterday.
So um, I hope he's doing well, Christy, in there. I know it's hard as a mama <laughs> having your chicks being scattered when there's something like this going on. Yeah, and the, yesterday they can, they canceled the rest of the junior hockey season, so that was a bummer. Felt so sad for the the kiddos that uh, it was their last year. They didn't really get a good send off. The playoffs and the championship series got canceled, so no more hockey this season. Unless the NHL can can get going again, but I don't know. I don't know how uh, good the chances of that happening are at this point, but we shall see. So, other things are more important. Not much. <laughs> But I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy. I don't personally know anybody yet infected, but um, I'm sure that's a matter of time. But I'm just thankful we have all this. That we can do things like um, crafting. I know it's it's my my saving grace. It's what gets me through some of the tough stuff. So being able to kind of lose yourself in crafting. So I'm so pleased that so many of you are able to join me. And those of you who are just joining us, this is a second class. Of this, we are doing a um, variation of my summer fairy house from way back, way back in time. So it's um, a project from back in 2011, I think it was. 2000, might have been 2012 when I started the series. And it had the four seasons of fairy houses. So this was the, the original one, and this is the summer fairy house. And then I went on to do the fall fairy house, which is on a tree stump, the winter fairy house, and then the spring fairy house. And then there's also been others. There's the um, fairy godmother house, the tooth fairy house, the um, wizard house. I'm trying to think of what others that we have done fairy house-wise. That are part of that series. So let's keep on just gluing these all on. I know this is not the most exciting part of doing a project, but stuff that has to happen. Well, my husband and son rarely leave the house right now. Trevor, once his job um, stopped, he's just been home. I mean, that was unnerving because where he works was up about three blocks away from the nursing home where this all started here in the States in Kirkland. He only worked like three blocks away from there. Um, so it was a bit unnerving to send him off to work in Kirkland <laughs> when you guys all over the world were hearing about the stuff happening at Kirkland so but he's doing well we're all doing well we haven't had any major <laughs> screaming matches yet which is a good thing
So I, uh, but I think it's fun to be able to just get together since we can't physically get together right now. It's fun to be able to virtually get together and just kind of chat and craft and have a good time. So, so that gives me my front edge and this is the inside edge. So then we just need to finish this one and the back side. So I'll need to obviously need to trim up some more pieces. I also have the album done that I will be um, doing in Calgary. We're tentative. We haven't changed any dates at such yet. Just uh, we're keeping it where it is, and we shall see. Um, as long as everything moves forward as we hope, that'll still be happening. But I want to let you all guys all see that. And um, I know it's a, it's a rare sighting to have a fully completed project. Mr. Salem came to say hi. He wants to see. See, he wants to see. Do you want to see Auntie Joy? Here, I'll switch cameras real quick. No, see ya. See ya. There's his little feet, Joy. <laughs> He's like, you're caught. There we go. See? Say hi. Look up here. Look up here. It's like, oh, where am I? Here, let's switch cameras so Auntie Joy can see you. See? 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 Say hi. Hi. See, he's got a little white fluff on his chest and a little one down here on his belly. It's so cute. He's a good boy. Yeah, see? Say hi. All right, well, we've had our pet parade. All right, you gotta go down there now. So, um, yeah, it wouldn't be without a kid or a pet or somebody interrupting me. You know, it's not, it's just the way life is for me. <laughs> Tear up a few more pieces. His eyes are mainly green. And then they have blue right around the, poop, per, the pupil, and then they kind of go out to a kind of a yellow green on the edge. So he's he's got the coolest eyes. Um, they kind of look like you know the ocean or the sea kind of thing. They're really quite cool. I call them ocean eyes when we were first first get him when we first got him. And he's really not a black black because even my husband goes, well, he's not even a black cat. <laughs> he's um, he's more of a really dark, dark, kind of like dark chocolate brown. Okay, what are you getting into now, little man? He says, well, you let my buddy leave and kept me here. You can also do this with um, little stones too. You can glue those on.
I like this, being able to just tear. It's easy to tear, so you just tear it with your fingers to the size shape you need it. And this is another one I'll fold around the corner. So we're on to our last edge. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, McDonald's has these kind, these, th their cup holders. Somebody was mentioning cup holders. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting here thinking on it. And I think McDonald's has, at least my McDonald's here, has the cup holders that are out of this material as well. And now the two of them are one on each side of the door playing under the door with the, you know, paws under the door. <laughs> uh, I'm a toddler. He usually sleeps this time of day. And it's okay to have gaps in between these because we're going to be inking and painting this and stuff. So it'll even look more like stone. So it doesn't have to look absolutely perfect right now because we're still modifying it. Just kind of it's like putting a puzzle together, and you just you know tear pieces as you need to to fit. I 
Now I'm letting these hang over and I'll go ahead and trim trim those off here shortly. You could also, as I said, you could cut or tear um, chipboard. You can cut chipboard and you can make it look like brick if you wanted to, or you could just use paper on it or just paint. So, you know, you have, I'm just trying to show you some options of things that you could potentially um, do um, in terms of, you know, how you want your chimney to look. There's all sorts of possibilities. Alrighty, so then I can just trim off on this edge. It's also easier if you just let it dry because uh, they don't stick to your scissors as badly either, but I don't want to wait around for that. Alright, so we've got it to where I've got to make sure the little notch there for where my roof comes in. And then my roof line, so I got the whole front, the side, and the back. So I want to test this because I wanted to do this on here before I glue this onto my house, but so that fits on there perfectly. And that's going to work really well. So I'm going to set this aside to let it dry and then. After we do um, the tower part of covering over these edges, we'll come back and then we can, when we're ready to paint this, uh, when we're ready, once we have got the, um, using the um, um, medium to put that on, I can then paint over this with medium and then they'll both dry and we'll paint them. But and I'm not sure if we're going to get to the painting today just because we got to let things dry in between. So, all right, so we'll get this here. Let me go grab my medium and just a mat, mat or floss. It really doesn't matter. I tend to prefer the mat, but it doesn't really matter which. All right, in terms of medium, I'm going to be using my Crafters Workshop Matte Gel Medium, um, which um, I also have to disclose that I do, re as a member of their design team, I do get um, products for free. Any opinion about it, it's, you know, my own, but um, FCC rules require that I do let you know that I get these for free. Uh, other alternates, um, you can use Collage Medium from Distress. Multi uh, media mat from <coughs> excuse me Ranger. There's any number of different um, mediums that are out there that you can use. Um, this is just the one that that um, I am using. So 
I'll go ahead and get my nonstick mat out so I don't get goop all over everywhere. And then, um, rather than just using this to cover over those edges, I like to use some tissue like this. This is just a bag, paper bag. Um, works perfectly well. So I just grabbed a paper bag that I had. Just need a brush. So I'm just going to tear some strips of this. I'm just, I cut it into you know, three quarter inch wide or ish or so strips. And I'm going to use this on all my corner seams. So they'll be on these corners, these corners. Um, I won't need to do it so as much down here because I have these, my um, construction strips on the outside. Um, and then the corners of the roof and stuff. Now my, uh, I'm not sure why that has come loose. My construction strips kind of came off. So I might stick some of my my uh, goop up underneath there as well. So anyway, get my sleeves all pulled up. Try not to get too much goop on everything. So I'm just going to take and take my medium. I'm going to slather it on my corners. And we're just going to take and paint that, put some on, put it over, and then paint over the top of it. Overlap it. It's you know it's basically kind of like paper macheing the uh, that edge. You can do one or more layers if you want. Just kind of gives less of a sharp edge on the corner. And as I said, if you want to do more than one layer to give it even more of a rounded edge. It comes up to the window. Just wrap it around into the window because I'm going to probably go ahead and wrap some of that into the window. So if, you, if you're not the world's greatest at cutting, don't worry about it. Like cutting those windows out because, you know, we can, we can tweak it so that it Can cover over a lot of it. <laughs> That's what the phrase I was looking for. So,
Okay, so then we can just work our way along all these joints. And this isn't a very, you know, it's not like a grocery bag weight paper bag. Just, you know, like a lunch bag. You can just use a lunch bag. I think that's what I used on the originals in those kits and stuff. Everybody got like a lunch bag in their kit to uh, do this part. So it doesn't require any fancy materials for that. And you can skip this part. If you're wanting to do your house with just um, paper, you can just go ahead and paper it. So if you prefer doing it that method and not doing all this this messy stuff, that's perfectly fine. Also, if you wanted to use some sort of a texture medium, you could add texture to it with a texture medium that's got, you know, grit or sand stuff in it. Wait, where'd my bag go? Oh, I used it all up. So I put some more strips. So I want to see, am I missing anything in the chat? We're gonna do it more just roof lines. So. The shorter little pieces are along that curve thing. Onto this side, slather it into that intersection using little short pieces. Since it's a curve, This stuff dries pretty quickly too. No matter what kind, what brand of medium you're using, it, it dries surprisingly quickly. All right, so then let's do these front edges here. Okay. 
this gives it a little bit more of a rustic feel and less, you know, I don't know. I kind of like it just kind of fits with the kind of fairy kind of thing. And this one last edge here. Now, I don't like how the ridge is really showing along this front edge as it's dried. So I'm going to put another coat or another layer over it. So there you can see how it just kind of softens those edges. You can also wrap around the um, the windows if you choose you want to do that to give them a little bit more of a rustic kind of feel. Um, you can do that or you can just leave them as they are um, and just let it dry. And I'm just going to put some of this in here just to kind of seal this joint and just slathering some goop in there. I'm not going to put anything I don't think on the just getting some goop filling in the, the little crack there. Now, I don't know that I want to well maybe I should do those. Let's go ahead and do them. We've got while well, we got the goop out. Go ahead and do this these back seams too. Just takes a second, then you're consistent. I'll just keep it to the one layer. Last little section. Bits and bits here at the bottom.
Turn that with a crack too. You run some so it fills in the crack along that construction strip so it doesn't stand out quite so much. So I'm going to paint over it. doesn't stand out so much. And on this side. Now that's got the um, chimney up against it, so I'm not going to worry about this this uh, this edge right here. Other than I might just put some goop in it, um, but um, since we're going to have the roofing shingle thingies on there, and the uh, edge of the rock where he comes up against there, so there we go. Okay. Then that's. Oops, I don't want to put this away just yet because I want to do. So I'm going to set this aside now and let this dry while I work on my um, chimney thing again. So now we can take some of our goopity goo goo. This will help, help pull the edges down and you're just going to kind of Slather it, kind of getting it down into those little cracks and crevices, so then it's not going to go anywhere. And it's also going to seal, so when we paint, because otherwise, what happens if you don't seal it with something like this first? The um, this is such a, a loose cardboard type material that it's just going to soak up your paint. So we need, we want to seal it a bit with this stuff, and this is just going to make sure it stays stuck down too. So I'm just kind of really dabbering it. It also gives a little keeps the texture if I don't brush it in there, but that kind of keeps it. So get down in those nooks and crannies. But you kind of want to have the glue at least most of the way dry, you know, before you do in this part. So, so that's why we set it aside while we worked on the other. While the glue dried, and now that the glue is pretty dried, we can go ahead and do this. This is going to offer not only additional adhesive to hold things on, it's, it's sealing it as well. So. Kind of a dual purpose.
Okay, so we pretty much have that. Where are we at time-wise? We started a little late, so we'll keep going for a few more minutes. Um, but then on, on um, I'll save this to paint this for on Thursday because it won't be dry enough to paint today. But I can talk to you a little bit about how we're going to be doing the roof. So that's ready to now sit and dry, but it has a real stone look to it. And then we'll give it a coat of, um, I'll probably go ahead and put some gesso on it. With the uh, medium on there sealing it, you wouldn't have to. Um, you could go straight to the paint. So I might also take some of my um, the stuff and do up in the upper little bit of the top of the, so you don't look inside there and just see the construction strips so that it looks like it's stone inside of there. Or I might just make a whole top piece, actually, and cut a little hole in it so it I, I kind of like that idea. And then we'll make it just have a little opening in the top. So that's probably what I'll end up doing. Um, but just giving it some sort of, of a top on there. Um, and you can use your heat tool and dry this. But I do always recommend typically is that you just let it dry naturally. You know, take a break um, before walk or something. And let things dry a little bit before... Um, rather than just always trying to do it, speed it up <laughs> with um, the process of our trying to dry it. it it's, it's just going to naturally, excuse me, drying is going to be, be better than um, otherwise drying it. So we'll let those dry and then we'll be ready to kind of paint. We'll paint the tower. I'm probably going to, I'm going to paper, I think I'll go ahead and paper the, the face, paint the tower. We'll do the leaves on the roof. Um, and then, I'm, as I said, I'm using these pieces that I'm going to use for the shingles. So I'll be, of course, they turn that way. So, but kind of shaping them a little bit and sticking them on. Um, and I want to do it so it's kind of, it's layered and they're sticking up kind of thing. So, so they're going to be sticking up. And that's going to be somewhat similar to what I did on with the paper on the original to where I cut these and then I really distressed the edges and then just cut them into pieces. Now I have these on here running horizontally and I'm going to run them vertically on um, onto this version. So they're going to be running this way. So, but I like it's an ink leaf so that they're ready to go. So we can chat for a few more minutes. And then, uh, I've been, oh, I know what I'll do too is, well, rather than you sitting here watching me ink these, why don't I show you the album? I'm going to let this dry and then we'll continue on on it on, um, stuff back in my drawer. Um, We'll continue. We'll, we'll, I'll get these all inked because that would be boring to sit and watch me ink. Because um, i got to get a different ink out that I'm, I don't have out. I've been inking with um, what persimmon. It's a hot pink and rusty hinge for this um, project that I want to show you. So this, was, this is the album that I'm going to be teaching in Calgary. And I'll have it also available after um, I teach it up in Calgary, uh, for those who, who you know, um, will be able to join us in, in Calgary, I will have um, videos and such available that the people in the class will have access to. But I also want people to um, who, who aren't going to make it up to Canada to be able to um, enjoy this class as well. So it comes in this. This is the largest size. I was going to do three sizes, but I think I'm only going to do two. So that's the large size. And then it also has a smaller size. So, um, and the larger size is um, 7 by 11 overall, by that deep. <laughs> and the small one is 
five and a half by eight and a half. So you can see in, and I've showed this before, so it has these signet, what I'm calling signature, or no, stacked signatures. So these are made out of um, envelopes and pouches and pockets and that sort of thing um, in these two signatures. And then there's um, other parts on that are part of the cover. Um, so this is what it looks like, this naked, and then it rolls up. But here, now don't faint, people. Seeing an absolutely, pretty much, totally complete album for me is, is a rare sighting, as those who've been around for a while um, will know. So um, so this opens up. Now this is using two, two of my paper collections. This is using... Um, garden gathering and and I had it written down and it's out of my brain. It's another one of the fairy ones. It's garden gathering and and and, and then um, fairy lights. I don't have garden gathering in a printout thing, but it's using fairy lights, which is what we used on the in suspense two, and then. Um, Garden Gathering, which is um, a relatively new one. So I use those two paper collections on that. So it has a large um, tag here in this front. So let's start. Let's unroll it all the way this way. Now in here, I'm, I have um, inside, I have the signature, which are perfect for journaling. This is part of my photo journal series, which is a combination photo album journal. Um, so it has these journaling signatures in pockets um, throughout the album. So then in here there's another signature, um, a tight signature for, for journaling. So a little pocket and then this has got two little um, pockets that have little tags on them. And well, then that ties close and it creates another little tuck spot for another one. So this is one of the tags that are part of the garden gathering. So then this one has a pocket that I've added on. And here's where I've used some um, um, washi tape to add some extra on there. So this is this one was a large envelope. So I have it tied here to split it so that I have tags then that this envelope is split into two tags. So I put a flap on here and to hold those flaps down I have this little belly band going on there. So then these are some envelopes as well so they got tags in them. Then this is a pocket and this is another one of the signatures. And it's got front and back covers as part of the, that paper collection. It's got the little, this opens up. And this just tucks into the pocket. This is another envelope. So then it has a large tag where it has a journaling spot to put photos on the back. You can put other things inside this envelope as well. So that ties close. Here's an envelope with a little envelope for the tag that's also attached so that it forms a pocket. Then this has got one of the journal cards attached as a pocket so that, that I can put, oh, that one's needs to rub it on it. Okay, it's not 100% done, then I guess I don't have to rub it on that. So a um, couple of tags behind it. This is also the other sides of those um, envelopes. And so they have tags, plus it's got a little band on it for some smaller tags. Those flip. Um, this is the, the, oops, it goes the wrong way. Um, so this is the other half of that envelope, and it's got a couple of tags, and I split it with a piece of pattern paper there. Another one of the journal cards, and it's got, it's an envelope, so it's got a pocket. So that goes in there, and then, um, turn this into a, um, I'm off camera. So a couple of tags fit in there space here for photos and then against this back 
cover um, has a large tag here, which you can put photos on the back, and then two smaller tags that slip in at the top and the bottom. So this back piece is up uh, two pockets, and then the front piece is a band pocket. So that slips into there. So this is the one stacked signature. It's using stack the deck. And then the next stack signature up here also is using stack the deck. Um, has a little tuck spot with another one of these kind of little fold up envelopes. That's part of the paper collection. It has another um, journaling tag that fits in this envelope. And then on the back side, it also has a couple of tags and a couple of levels of pockets. So I added those pieces on there to kind of def define where those pockets were. Um, this is a half of a, a six by nine envelope tag on one side. I flip the, the flap of the, the, the envelope to the back side um, and then are glued it. Did I glue it down? Must have. And then I, this is another envelope that's stuck inside. So then it has a tag in here. And it's the envelope is flipped over so that it forms a flap. And then on this side, I actually attached again a um, one of the journaling tags so that I could put a pocket in there. On this back side, this has got two coin envelopes of different sizes that flap down, and they've, and they've got um, tags inside of them, a couple more tags that fit into this large pocket, and this ties. Now, obviously, we will be in the class, we will be constructing the base album. And people can get started. Obviously, you're not going to get this much done where all, everything's matted and everything in class. But there will be videos um, of how I've, I've got mine finished. So, and then another tag that's behind there. Tag on this side. The other side of the envelope. Tag in there. Flap on the back side. Made a, with the flap, I made a little tag. It's got some little guys and those also need strings on them. Coin envelope that's attached to the back side. So here's the flap and the pocket. So it's got a large flap. So then this uses the string closure on the back side. That is the, the little um, coin envelope forming a pocket and then here it's got oh I didn't put tags in there so this is a pocket here it's a pocket back behind so and that's got these little ones so I need to fit something in that I just realized I did but this is another signature um, that fits in there so there's the stuck signature it's got the journaling signatures it's got tons and pockets in different areas and then this rolls up here at the very front, it's got an up and down flap, and then it's got flaps inside with pockets with tags inside, flap, flap, and then this tie is closed. So, um, that is the problem then that I will be teaching, and then it has a cord that wraps around. and completed album ready to go and so this is what I will be teaching in Calgary in um, in June middle of June so it's two collections it's fairy lights and garden gathering are the two collections um, the only papers that I needed to print two of were I printed more I printed like what four to do the cover of this green um, wood other than that it's just one each of the um, the different papers that are in there this I use a Tim Holtz 
wildflowers die to cut um, these guys out of. Um, but other than that, um, it's pretty much just the papers. So, but this is um, this will be a, a fun project. Now um, you can choose to do it out of my papers, or we're we're going to do them as naked kits. Um, so you in class you'll have all the the chipboard and cardstock and all that, and it'll be cut and the envelopes, all of that. So it'll be all cut. So we will be assembling so that in class it'll be you'll be assembling it. Um, so that it'll be at least to this level and then um, some people will want to go ahead and get started on doing their papering and you'll be able to choose your own paper so you can use a commercially printed paper or if you want to use my own papers um, you'll be able to do that so anyway that's where that's what that is and then um, the other project that I have which I've already showed you but I'll show you again the other project and this again will also be something that that I will have available after I teach this in um, in Calgary. But my um, this I've I've shown this, and then so it has this drum that has the tags that fit inside. And this is using um, this is the Nautilus. This is using the um, Stamperia. Um, not under the sea what's it called something C. <laughs> my brain is so dead um, but this will be the other uh, the 3d project that we will um, be doing I'll also have a sample of this done in graphic 45 um, paper as well so but those need to get shipped off um, shipped off to um, Calgary now that I have them completed So anyway, so you know we got a little bit done. And that was probably as much as we never get as much done as I would like in class anyway. But but these things need to dry. This is the one that one issue when you're doing kind of mixed media techniques on some of this stuff um, is it does need to be allowed to dry. And so, but we'll be back on Thursday, same time, and um, we'll be ready to just keep on moving forward on getting our little fairy house in and hopefully we'll get to the point where we could be working on um i have the base ready to go so we can work on it while things are drying and stuff so it's many times with these kind of projects you want to have multiple facets of it going and you kind of juggle them around so while one thing is drying you can work on something else and vice versa so um the large seahorse is not a die on that um that um, the um, Nautilus, it's just um, a cutout from the paper. So, um, but they also have a, of that seahorse, they do have a mold. I haven't been able to find it here um, in the States yet, somebody who has the mold. Stamperia is a little bit harder to get a hold of, and right now next to impossible, because you can't really order from Europe right now. Um, because I had, I had seriously looked in, because I have an account with Stamperia and can order for them directly. They have a $500 minimum order, and that's wholesale, so that's like $1,000 worth of the product. Um, and I was, I was seriously looking at it and seeing if anybody wanted to, you know, just order some of the papers as well so I could put together an order. But until life settles down um, over there, it's, I, you know, most of, most of their people are out of Italy. Um, but I think their paper is printed in Poland, which is very common for the European papers. But regardless, it's, it's, yeah, until life settles down a little bit, it's going to be hard to get a hold of those. Cause, and I also know that, um, the U S distributor, um, doesn't have a huge supply of it. So I can't like order from there. So hopefully I'll be able to get some of that paper, um, later this summer when we're um, ready to be doing that project. Now, I'm not going to be doing it live on the shows. I will have video, a whole video series for it um, because I want to make that available to the students um, for my students up in Calgary. Um, so they have that and then that'll be available, but it won't be till after I teach it up in Calgary. So, um,
anyway. So, oh yeah, providing the tech. Well, hopefully, what happened is, for some reason, my broadcaster software decided to disappear. Well, not, the software doesn't didn't appear, but the setup disappeared. So Trevor had to come up and reset it all up, and he grumbles about my PC. I don't use my PC other than for broadcasting my shows because what I use to broadcast needs it's only Windows based. And all the rest of my computers are apples. So I, I don't know. I hate my Windows <laughs> laptop. And Trevor hates it too. So he gets grumbly at it as well. But he had to completely reset it up again for me today. So don't know why. Again, technical things, um, electronic things happen to me that don't seem to happen to other people. Somewhere along the line, I don't know. Who I pissed off, what I pissed off, but there's some sort of crafting god that just is annoyed with me and makes it difficult for electronic things and other things in life. So I just have to kind of roll with it. But fortunately, with Trevor living at home right now, he is was able to to fix it. It was it was close. It was about two minutes away from we're gonna have to cancel till tomorrow. So thankfully, about the point I was like getting ready to to um, type out that I was going to have to postpone. He goes, well, it's working now. So thank goodness for 20-somethings. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, alrighty, guys. Well, I am going to um, let you guys all go. It was wonderful for you all to join me here in my studio. I greatly um, appreciate it. Um, I am trying to do these shows you know, just to help everybody out. I may do one over the weekend. We shall see as, you know, as we'll see how timing goes and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm planning on Tuesday, Thursday to working on this project. If I do something over the weekend, it might not be working on this. I've also been thinking of doing some stuff with some tags and things like that. So it just depends, you know, we're all getting kind of housebound and stir crazy. So trying to alleviate some of that, not only for myself, but for all of you. So if I'm, and I also may just up and decide to be doing a live show while I'm just crafting, just to have somebody to talk to other than myself. Um, so, um, you know, if you suddenly see it pops up that I'm, I'm, I'll try to give people enough warning, but otherwise it might just pop up and I may just be deciding to just craft. We'll see. Um, everything's fluid for all of us right now. So big thing is everybody stay safe. Stay at home. Try to stay positive. We will all get through this. Sometimes it, some days don't feel as much like it as, as others. Um, but I'm just going to maintain positivity. And uh, it's given us opportunity to kind of slow down and take a breath. And uh, maybe do some other things around the house, that sort of thing. But um, big thing is I just hope and pray that everybody stays safe, that all your Friends and family, stay safe. I know there's many of you who are in a situation much like myself, where my mom's kind of locked away in an assisted living to where I can't can't be with her, can't see her, other than waving to her from the doorway um, when I drop stuff off to her. So um, but she's doing well, and hopefully those of you who have um, parents in a similar situation or other family members in a similar situation are able to at least communicate with them and... Um, and uh, take care of them that way. So, uh, so everybody have an amazing uh, rest of your evening. Um, and we will be back then on Thursday, same time again, <laughs> as somebody said in the chat, as long as I don't have any more technical difficulties. So we'll cross our fingers and hope that's the case. But otherwise, if I'm ever running late, you can always go over to Paper Doodles and Joy or myself usually... Um, lets people know, you know, that we are running late, um, so, excuse me, so, um, we try to at least keep you informed through that, that format, but anyway, um, that's, that's all I got for right now, so thank you all so much for joining me here in my studio, and we will see you on Thursday, so peace out, love you guys all bunches, bye for now. <laughs>